This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. This is a very powerful, cheerful start to the show, don't you think? Just having Amy do that intro. I think so. Yeah, no better way to start the morning. It's unbelievable. It's just very, very professional, ladies and gentlemen. So we we're talking about trying to decide where we'd start the show today. Should we start it with the you know, the Trump trial? Should we start it with uh, the Biden uh, moves that said it's basically all white people hate black people? And he's at it again. I just, these are the people we got running this country. Really? We got Trump, but we got Biden. That's who we got. Yep. That's who's who's the, got it better than us? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that's what I know. It's, yeah, no. It's, you know what's amazing about that? You would think that RFK would score higher than he does because a lot of people. I mean, I've seen numbers as high as a third of the people in the United States don't want to vote for either Biden or Trump. Yeah, that says a lot about everybody else that's running when the whole country feels like they're going just give us anybody other than these two and then they gave us somebody else and they're like ah now nah, we're good on no, you not too. that one. not well, that guy was it him a week ago that came out and talked about how he had a worm crawl yes. into his brain and yep. eat part of his brain was that him that's correct that's okay. who we got now that's that's the third best option ladies and gentlemen <laughs> yeah exactly oh you don't like trump and biden we'll go for the oh wait a minute worm brain yeah I still, I, my doctor is, a, he's from Brazil originally. Mm -hmm. Great doctor. Just a great guy. Dr. Uh, uh, De Alameda is his name. And he, he's very, very upset that, uh, what's her name? Nikki Haley didn't get chosen because he thought she'd be a very, very good president and kind of look at things differently. Mm -hmm. Did you guys like her? I, I don't know much about her. I mean, I didn't know much about her either, but she seemed, I guess, halfway decent from, I the little bit that I knew about her. I liked her more than, than probably Trump just cause it's a fresher face, mm -hmm. you know, kind of in, and maybe this is just going back to like what I remember pre pre Trump, where it was like mm. the presidential candidates acted a little more presidentially, if that makes sense. You know, there was a decorum in debates and it seemed mm -hmm. like she kind of had that, that presidential feeling yeah. to her. Yeah. Um, what yeah. I don't like though, is that after attacking and, th and this is happens with everybody. So I'm not just saying this about specifically Nikki Haley, but you, you go and you, you attack and you talk about, Oh, he's the worst option for ever. Like you can't, yeah. we can't possibly ride with him. And then as soon as she drops out, she wants to get on that ticket with him as the <laughs> yeah. VP. So yeah. it's like, he is the best option for this. It's like, okay, all right, let's yeah. have a little bit of a, of a backbone here, everybody. And well, she's in the news now because there was some bomb she wrote, finish them on that they're going to drop or we're planning on dropping on um like hamas or something like that oh yeah and so now everybody's up in arms with her and upset because she's writing finish them on a bomb that's going to kill a bunch of people but i mean other than that she seems like a good person other than murder yeah what would be the funniest thing to write on a bomb like <laughs> also like why are we writing anything on it? like nobody reads it on its way down <laughs> that's true <laughs> unless i got very good eyesight yeah. how about duck just write duck on the side of it. Heads up. <laughs> Heads up, baby. I don't know. Like I said, I was just trying to watch uh, some of this stuff this morning. And uh, I just, but I mean, you got Biden doing the same thing now. He's making these outrageous statements like, you know, Trump hates black people. And it's like, oh, come on. And we were talking about that before the show this morning, talking with, with Tevin and AJ about the fact that if I were black, I'd be pissed off at the world because, oh, I love black people. Oh, I hate black people. Oh, he hates black people. It's like, leave my skin color out of this, would you please? Fight your own battles. Yeah. Love us or hate us, I don't really care. Just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Exactly like right. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, there's a story, ladies and gentlemen. It's in the Wall Street. Oh, excuse me, the New York Times. Uh, between vacation photos and cookout invitations posted on their private text thread, a group of Mississippi sheriff's deputies who call themselves, they call themselves the goon squad. We should, how about the goon squad morning show, man? I'll talk like this. And, hey, look, this, we're the goon squad. Well, the, the, the old verbiage about that is if you give yourself a nickname, it's mm -hmm. probably not a good nickname. No, yeah. I agree. Yeah. So uh, to the goon squad, maybe maybe don't do that. Yeah, maybe not. Let's not go with goon squad. 
they oh well wait a minute i i should have i should have finished that sentence okay uh a group of mississippi sheriff's deputies who called themselves the goon squad traded pictures of rotting corpses and joked about rape and shocking people with tasers in the face okay yeah. goon squad how's it going <laughs> jesus what is wrong with people so my, I'm super curious. So this is like fresh. <laughs> this is super new, right? This is today. Today's New York Times. So do we think, it, it, based on how some things go, is it paid administrative leave? Are they going to get Ooh. fired? Is it just relocated or like, it seems like the punishment for like stuff like this is always less than what you think it should be. Yeah, this, yeah. this seems like a felony offense. Like you should be, you never should be an officer again. Yeah, they... I bet it's just in, like an administrative leave because people that are police officers or um, like EMTs or have kind of the high stressful where you're very traumatized seeing things at work. Yeah, they definitely have a dark sense of humor. So my guess is this was like a oh, group yeah. chat that maybe got out of hand and got leaked. So, yes. But uh, if they were actually like doing things to the physical body, then they would get fired maybe. But if it was well, just like text messages, we're going to find out if that was the case or not. They did it all in front of their supervisor, who often joined in the banter, so their boss was part of it, too. An encrypted WhatsApp group that obtained uh, had obtained by the New York Times in Mississippi today provides a years-long record of the day-to-day -day conversations of a patrol unit involved in terrorizing residents across a central Mississippi county for a generation. The goon squad came... Uh, Oh, God, now they just covered it. Don't cover it up with a... You need to buy our newspaper. <laughs> the Goon Squad came to a national attention last year after Rankin County Sheriff's deputies tortured two black men in their home, shot one of them in the face, Jesus. which didn't kill him, by the way. Six officers, included, uh, including three from the Goon Squad shift, pleaded guilty, were sentenced to federal prison in March. So they did get federal prison. Perfect. Fired. Uh, well, <laughs> perfect. Fired. An investigation by the Times of Mississippi Today last fall revealed all of this stuff. Uh, nearly two dozen residents experienced similar brutality when Rankin deputies burst into their homes looking for illegal drugs. Most of the deputies in the chat have not been charged, and some have not been accused of violence or other illegal behavior. Several deputies said their comments were jokes. We were just joking around when we shot the black guy in the face. That's basically what they said. We are just joking around. What what makes me the most mad about this is, maybe, I shouldn't say the most mad because this is terrible, but like it, this ruins I think the reputation of what a lot of good cops no doubt are. Oh, yeah. no doubt because mm -hmm. you know I, it, it, just like anything the media uh, will take pick up a story you don't pick up uh, a story about like the cop that donated some of his own salary to help like fund schools yeah stuff. Like, yep. that we're, we're not going to hear no. about that that probably mm -hmm. happens somewhere to an extent but like. You're going to hear about these guys who tortured and shot guys in the face. Yep. Um, and then, you know, it's not like that's a sweeping thing where every single person in that police department is terrible. There are some, clearly. Mm, right. But yep. I'm sure there's other right. people that work an office or two down from those guys that are probably just stand up super cops. Yep. So it, it makes the reputation terrible for, for those guys. All right. Well, I, I got to read one more paragraph of this, of this story here because uh, it'll make Tevin feel better about being a black man in America today. Okay. Mm -hmm. You'll feel better about this. Amid mundane messages about time cards and vacation days, the deputies delighted in the violence that they had witnessed and goaded one another to assault and shame people struggling with addiction or accused of crimes. They punctuated the chat with racist comments about Mexicans. Jesus, it's like what? What year is it? These guys are yeah. a real piece of work. Yeah, right? they kind of are, don't you think? Oh my God, oh God, like, grow up, guys! Like <laughs> it's twenty twenty four. Like act, act right for like, w once in your life. Like, time to grow up. My goodness. Yeah, I'm, this story goes on and on. I mean, it's really, really long. Uh, it says in November 2019, the same year the department came under review for the three fatal shootings that involved Goon Squad members, the deputies discussed turning their work into a game, one point for every arrest. Deputy Cody Grogan asked the group how many points he would get if he shot someone. Depends if they die or not, replied Lieutenant Jeffrey Middleton. They'll die, Deputy Luke Stickman. Oh, I would yeah. never go through life with the name Luke Stickman. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. 
stick his ass in jail. <laughs> yeah. like, a point system. Like, this is, yeah, this is bad. This needs to be, oh like you God. said, this is a fresh story. By this dinner time tonight, this their faces and names need to be plastered across, like, news outlets. Yeah, I would think so, yes. Right? I, I, like, yeah. This should not be just swept under the rug. This has to be a news story. God, it doesn't ever get to the point where they start ridiculing and making fun of white people. How come that doesn't show that, up? That here? part usually gets skipped in, in these stories. <laughs> it does get skipped. I, th- I There's no picture of my assume they're all honkies, though, I would guess. Cody Stickman? Yeah. I, Cody I, Stickman. I think we can assume. Okay, let's we'll close with yeah. this. Oh, yeah. They all look like, I'm looking at a picture of their them all standing in court. They all look like they did exactly what they're accused oh, of. Oh, really? Yeah. They look like that? Yep. I think from the, this show from now on, welcome to the Tom Bernard Morning Show with AJ and Luke Stickman. <laughs> you, you used to be known as Tevin. Luke Stickman. Yeah, What's going on, Luke Stickman? Because Luke and Lick are very close to one another. And if you're talking about Stickman, they're going to always think about your Schwanz. <laughs> so Lick Schwanzman. What do you think? We'll change, use that name. <laughs> That's terrible. I, think, I thought Stickman was bad enough. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. All right, we got to take a break here. We got uh, welcoming back a, a good friends, which is uh, it's always a pleasure, no mm-hmm. question. KNL Surplus and Ammo and Line of Lakes is my choice for firearms and ammunition. Jim, the owner, is one of the most knowledgeable people in the business and is great at getting you into the right firearm for your needs. KNL Surplus and Ammo now carries Benelli shotguns that offer enhanced performance. I like enhanced performance. And uh, amazing uh, reliability for uses ranging from waterfowl hunting to skeet shooting and more. You guys ever go skeet shooting? Uh, Nope. I think, is that the, where they shoot the discs? Yeah. No, nope. Um, yeah, I've done skeet shooting like once. I went hunting a couple times with my grandpa when he was still around. Oh, but, there you uh, go. Yeah. No, not, I'm not a good shot. Best <laughs> skeet shooter I've ever seen is Catherine Brandt. Jeez. We're honest, Scott. I went out. I had no idea this is true. She's blowing them all out of the air. I can't get near the damn thing. She's really good at that. I didn't even know she was such a. Just to cover my tracks, too. Th- me being a bad shot and my grandpa not being around are not related. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Let's point that out, shall I we? Want to clarify that before we move on. So here. you killed your grandpa. That, was it an accident or were you a part of the goon squad? Oh. I highly encourage you to stop in and talk with Jim and the rest of the KL Surplus crew between their knowledge, superior knowledge, I should say, of firearms, friendly customer service, overall stock, and fair pricing. I can't imagine a better location to purchase your next firearm. KL Surplus and Ammo's on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can reach them by phone 763 755 2614, or you can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Mike Lindell and my pillow employees I want to thank my listeners, our listeners, for all your continued support. It's very nice of you. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever when you use promo code TOM. And to get free shipping on your entire order, get 50% off the My Pillow 2.0. Also, get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six pack towel sets, only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers, 100% made in the USA. They're on sale for as low as $99.99. Yes, I did say $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels. In other words, what happens is they actually do absorb, which is very important, 
dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM and you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 and go to MyPillow.com and use promo code TOM. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Nice dexterity on hitting that button in there. No, the past couple of days, no. mouse, I'm telling you, you it's, it's sticking. I'm dragging windows all over the monitor. <laughs> it's really annoying. I'm going to have to get a new mouse for us or something. This is what we're saying. We're just We were just talking about that before the show started. It's just, you know, some stuff just does not work. I don't get it. Yeah, it sure does. Kind of like Judd. Speaking of stuff like that doesn't work. Yeah. One day a week, you know, <laughs> that kind of situation right there. Judd, it's been a hell of a hell of a run with, man, I've lost a couple people. You look, it's just, what the hell's going on? I don't know, man. Well, I mean, it's cancer. My bro- brother-in-law, uh, uh, okay. Brian, passed away, but I'm 57, which is just. That's not good. Too young. Way too, too young. young too young and he had what it was about uh six months or so and it was quick but really yeah yeah really? i think it was um no, it was last fall so what whatever that would be from nine months maybe yeah yeah but i mean it was it was tragic and sad and yeah fifth you know it, it's bad enough it's bad enough to die in your 60s but 50 your 50s just feels way too young so. wait a minute what it's bad enough to die in your 60s how about oh, your yeah. 70s, how a you? lot of guys don't get to you know what tom a lot of guys aren't like you that they don't get to uh 70 i tell you what 18 69 is the magic age that's a tough one to get also past, the magic number from what i understand yeah well yeah that's that's a <laughs> yeah that's a huge magic number and i'm not uh, <laughs> he looks down <laughs> well it's <laughs> I've always sort of been confused by this because it feels like when I was a kid, it was sort of like scoffed at a lot, but the younger ge- generation absolutely loves to talk about that number. So. They do. You're absolutely, that's why it even popped in my head. Cause they like to talk about that quite a bit. The only problem with that is does uh-huh. the guy ever get to be on top? I doubt it. You'd crush the woman. I, mean, I guess it depends on who's how big each person is, maybe. <laughs> well, I like, oh, 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 you're saying that, that heavy yeah. women should be on the bottom. Is that what you're saying? I think maybe whoever's heaviest. <laughs> whoever's heaviest. Either that or you do like, I don't know, maybe like a lay on your okay. side situation. Yeah. Kevin's doing that a tale like... of the tape. He's like yeah, breaking it down. <laughs> you gotta make sure everybody's safe in all of these <laughs> situations. No question about safe. it. So welcome back to the show. It's Thank great you. to have you back on, Pally. Thank you. It's good to be Declan back. did a hell of a job. I got to tell you, what a nice kid. Oh yeah, yeah, he is a very nice kid. He really he's a very is. nice kid. He, as, as age can confirm, he looks like he's about uh, twelve, but he's, but he's, I think he's thirty now. Thirty-one, he said. Didn't thirty-one? He? Yeah, yeah. yeah he, yeah. he does not look his age. No, he does not. He's one of these guys that doesn't gain weight too, so that's why I especially hate him. So he eats like a pig. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, he can eat whatever he wants. You know, there's people like that. It's it, yeah. it's incredible. It, it's incredible. But I mean, you know, 31 and you still don't, don't gain weight. That's that's pretty impressive. Yep. He'll bring in a box of those uh, those glazers from Quick Trip. Like, oh. and he'll pa- put away like two or three. And he's like, "You want one?" I'm like, "No." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's just like uh, guys like Jed and I can't afford that. Nah. Uh-uh. You're big enough already, Dex. And he's just like, "All right, more for me." 99 percent. but i tell you what i just went through that going out to the asia mall because they got those what are they called mochi donut mochi donuts whatever Mm -hmm. they are the best donuts i've ever had in my life god they're good but i got like two little hey the train's here to pick yeah that that's me it's coming right through right through the backyard (laughs) like to uh i like to apologize the train literally is in my backyard right now casey jones coming to get judd I love the sound of trains, though. Always have. Love the sound of train whistles. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's old school, right? Like, it's it's, yeah. it's something that's left from, you know, from years and years. The The train whistles never changed. Like, they don't. It, it's just, it it's perfected. I mean, listen to that thing. It's just perfected already. You don't need to change it up. I love it. There's no question about it. A lot happened in uh, in the sports world when uh, when you were gone for a couple of days there. The Timberwolves came yes. storming back to win one, so that was good. Yes, yep. For uh, so yeah, now three to one. If they lose, uh, obviously tonight at 
Target Center in Game Five. It's done, but yes, it feels it feels like a uh, a sweep would have been so unsatisfying, right? Because they've had a oh, really nice season. Yeah. It it would have been very uh, the season wouldn't have been a disappointment. The series would have been, and now at least you know if they win tonight and get to Game Six, I think we're going to complain a a lot less, and we have a champion. The Minnesota Professional Women's Hockey League team yep. went to Boston last yep. night, won Game Five, and they are the and they are the uh, they are the champions. So, congratulations! That's awesome. One hundred percent congratulations. Women's sports in Minnesota does, it does better than men's sports. Not even close, Tom. Mm-hmm. It's not, not even the close. Links of championships. Yep. Um. Yeah. No. It's not. Uh, it, it's funny. They seem to thrive on the pressure of big games. And uh, how can I say this nicely? The men's teams, at least since 1991, don't. 91 is that? That's all. It was only a couple of years ago. Yeah, was... just a couple of years ago. <laughs> God, 33 yeah, years. Yeah, we're. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know. God. I know. It's just. <laughs> I started joking when I said. <laughs> Incredible. Like, oh man. Generational sports fans and has no clue. But anyway, yeah, yeah that's congratulations. right. Congratulations. So, so we do have a champion. And again, to your point, it is a women's team, just like when the Lynx won their championships. No doubt about it. You got uh, these magnificent. What's a woman's name from uh, from Iowa? Oh, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark. Clark. Caitlin Clark. I always mm-hmm. want to call her Katie Ledecky. Is that because of Brittany? Yeah, that's no, yeah, definitely because of Brittany. That's yeah. definitely because of Brittany. No question about it. Brittany getting her own show on another uh, another outlet, but I can't tell you who it is yet. Big shot. Judd, did you know that uh, she's related to Katie Ledecky, the Olympian? No, I had no clue. Yeah, they're yeah. Like first, first yep. cousins or something like that. Yeah, they're yeah. first cousins, yep. How did that not come up on all those all those times I joined the show to talk sports? How did that not come up? <laughs> you know, the greatest thing about that is the first time she told me that was years ago. Mm-hmm. And she's like, Tom, I don't know if you know this or not. But, you know, and you know me, you don't say this kind of stuff to me because I'm going to take a shot at you no matter how good the news is. Just who I am. Of course, yeah. Tom, I don't know if you know this or not, but uh, Katie Ledecky is my first cousin. I went, oh, really? Who gives a shit? <laughs> and she got, she was like, well, <laughs> right. she was all depressed. I'm like, I'm kidding for Christ's yeah, sake. That was very similar to my first response. I was like, so is it hard to like brag about something you accomplished in life <laughs> when she's out here winning these gold medals? Like, and you're doing nothing. Yeah, but I think her claim to fame is that she makes better cookies. Like they have a family sugar cookie yeah, recipe. Or they something. do. Yeah. So yeah. Right. So Britney's are much better than Katie Ledecky's. And she never- <laughs> Britney. There you go. You got what it. What a piece of work that Britney is. No question about it. So yeah, we'll let you know when that. That should start pretty soon, I would think. So we'll let you know where she is when she's there. Because she deserves She always wanted to do it, and mm-hmm. now she gets to do it. So that'll be the great thing. It's like working with Judd. I've always wanted to work with Judd. Yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah just a lifetime goal, right? Absolutely a it lifetime was. goal. I, I think it was before you were born, I said, there's going to be a guy born in the next couple of years that I'd really like to work with. <laughs> yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was 19, 1969. You said, you know what? I mean, I think this guy is going to be born in the... End of the '60s is just going to be great. Um, we we should we should mention that while your twins did get smoked last night, they played well of late again. This is the yeah. weirdest damn baseball team. Yes, like what the hell are they doing? They get go rid of the sausage. By the way, what what's that? Get rid of the sausage. Enough with the sausage. Are we still doing the sausage? I I well, they, the last night game I saw, they were throwing it around. It looked like it was rotting on the stick. Like Jesus. I liked it during the 12 game win streak. I, I yeah. thought it was sort of cute and creative, but uh yeah, but I mean this team is my god, the pendulum swings. Yeah, oh I know. I agree. This the major swings. We're really good, we're really bad. Yes. The hell. Yes. Yes, and it's not that they lose, it's that like last night, what what was it? 6 to 1 last night or or it's not that they lose, it's that they go through these streaks where they win like one of Eight yeah. games or something like that, and then they'll come back and win seven of, of eight. It's like, where the heck is the consistency? Is there ever going to be? <laughs> At this rate, it sure doesn't look like it. it. It looks like their signature is the inconsistency. No doesn't question. It? About it. Yeah, there's no question about it. I just, I still love the fact that, and again, it's where I grew up. I understand that, but Rocco Baldelli. Every time I hear his name, I think it's some guy in the neighborhood coming to pick up the VIG. 
<laughs> hey, Rocco Baldelli's here. Well, you don't mess with him then. No. No, you don't want to mess if with him. He's coming to get the that, big. You don't mess with him. Very Tom. true. There's no question about it. But and one thing I always have loved, even Sansevier does it because he's Italian. Yeah. You know, like you like, you know, Rocco Baldelli does a pretty good job. And I just kind of like the, you know, the they're off and on a bit, but Rocco Baldelli does it. And then Sansevier, you know, it's really great who does a great job. It's Rocco Baldelli. All of a sudden you got the <laughs> accent. It's like what it comes back. It comes firing back. Well, there's back. certain names, though, right? Like like your guy, Tino. You got to do the accent on you Tino do Lattieri. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Tino I feel Lattieri. like there's certain, I feel like it's a French name. Like, like you got to do, like, like the true accents on French names are, it, it's just so much more impactful to do the accent. You know what Tino's real first name is? It's not Tino. It's not no. Martino or anything like that. No, what is it? So last name is Lattieri. So yeah. his first name is Martare. Really? Martare Lettieri. There is no more Italian name than that. I will tell you that. I had no idea. Yeah. Oh, Tino's one of my best friends, man. I love that guy. Just a great guy. Yeah. Tino. You know what? Him. You you talk about a guy who who had um do, if if you recall when he was playing goal, his parrot? His do you remember parrot. the parrot? Yeah, absolutely. I remember. Did he the throw parrot. in the goal for good luck? <laughs> It was not a fake parrot, by the yeah, way. Yeah, it was it a fake parrot. It was a little fake. Throw the, a real parrot in there. Just yeah. Flying yeah, and the parrot would just stay there. The real parrot would just like chill all game long. Hey, what's going on? What's the deal? Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh no. In, in case you don't know who we're talking about, he was the uh, he was the goalie for the Minnesota Kicks and the what was the name of the other team? Strikers. Strikers. There you go. Yes. And he is the son-in-law of Louis Nanny. Yes. No question, but it's a hell of a fan. We're very close to that family, and it's just there's a picture. By the way, I so I lose all this weight. I go to dinner with the entire nanny family. Tina was there, everybody was there. The picture comes back, looked like I weighed about 400 pounds. Like, what how the hell? What what was that? What angle did you take that from? I'm gonna take a wild stab here and a guess too, Tom, and and say that I'm willing to bet that. Dinner with the nannies at a great Italian restaurant, oh. not part of the diet plan. Not part of the diet plan, but it is always for everybody in uh, the world knows yeah. who Na Lou Nanny is. They, everybody knows him. It's amazing. It's incredible. It's incredible it really because is. it's not just hockey, too. You're right. It's everywhere. Oh, no. Everywhere. Everybody knows Louie Nanny. Well, I have a friend, Doug Dawson, lives in Toronto, Canada. I told him that I was having lunch down at the down at the ocean with Louie Nanny. Yeah. Lou Nanny. Oh God, could I meet him? I'm like, what? <laughs> it's Lou from the zoo. What the calm down. The last so time I, it was great. The last time I checked with Lou, um, he had you're 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 gonna love this one. He had season tickets to the Maple Leafs. Oh yeah, that's right. There you go. He just has season tickets in Toronto. <laughs> Louis, I love Louis, but Francine's a much better person than Louis is. His wife, much better person. Oh, complete saint, right? No, well, I got to be married to Louis. I mean, my God, let's think about it. But yeah, she is a saint. She's a very nice person. She is a wonderful person. And Michelle's married to Tino. She's a very dear friend of ours as well. Great. It's just a nice deal. You hang out family to family. It's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you eat well. Oh, well, let's not talk about that. That was wonderful. <laughs> And I, but I was the only one who didn't hold up an alcoholic drink to toast, though. I, I didn't do that because I'd like to stay married to Catherine. So that'd be good. Solid move. Solid move. No. You didn't, you didn't get one like just, just as a prop. So that's probably a good idea. No props, even. There's no question about it. Like I said, Uncle Tommy, hey, I had my first drink. This is wonderful. Had my second drink. Man, what a great time this is. Had my third drink. What the hell are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> There, there's me right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Drink five can be a problem. I oh, guess. Like, I, that's a huge. Problem. I know, I know of what you speak. Let's go drag him out of the house and beat the piss out of him. That's after five. <laughs> yeah, well, that's wonderful. That's good then. It's good that you don't drink. I do not. You're absolutely right about it. It's a good thing. There's no question about it. 
So what else? You got a closer for us? Because you went so far. I thought it was a great sports report. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we got the uh, Wolves, Wolves and Mavericks tonight, Game Five. If they win, you send it back to Dallas for Game Six. And I, I would say, if you win tonight, it at least gets interesting. I, I'm yes. not going to yep. say three, three to one. Still is a monumental task. And keep in mm-hmm. mind, no team in NBA history has come back from a three zero deficit. Yep. In the history, it's like one seventy seven and zero. Oh. But I, but I think if you can send it back to Dallas for Game Six. You know, every time you win, it's going to apply pressure on Dallas. Mm-hmm. No doubt. And three to one, I'm like, okay, that's nice. It's nice to get a win. Three two, it, it would. I I think it would actually get intriguing at that point. Yeah, especially because we got Game Seven at home. So that's yeah, it's, great it's, point. It's, a, it's an easier theoretically uh, thing to accomplish. Great part of it is for me, they have to win every single game they're in the rest of the year. They have to win them all. I kind of like that. Yeah, I mean that's and and if they if they can get if they somehow got through this, it would be it oh. you know it would be the greatest comeback I think we we could say safely um, for a Minnesota sports team not in a single elimination game. So yeah, not the Vikings, but I mean I, we've you know yeah we have not seen this and it's it's been done in hockey where a team comes back from three zero, but it's very very rare. So. I can understand that, but it just it makes it exciting. It's it's something to do in the winter time watching those Timberwolves. No question about that. And uh, mm-hmm. uh, you know, my family was excited to hear about it, so I was excited to hear about it. And hopefully, they well, I gotta believe they'll win tonight. I have to. It would be fun. There there is a rumor Kevin Garnett is going to return to Target Center tonight, which is a Let's very watch. rare. Where you had to watch the game because suiting up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He should out, suit up. Who out. knows? He, he could give him a couple. You know what? He could give him the bench. Minutes. They're down by eight with like five minutes to go, and I'll see him just like rip do the the shorts that like rip off. Oh yes. yeah, yeah. yeah. Give him a couple exactly. of minutes. Yeah. Roof blows off the place. What's wrong with that? Huh? AJ. Nothing wrong with that. I love it. Get the big ticket in there. He was one hell of a player, but I guess, man, when that guy got ornery, you better stay out of his way. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's that's accurate. And he and you know he and Glenn Taylor had not one but two huge falling fallings out, and he can't stand Glenn now. And so oh, really? he very rarely, rarely shows up. But the there's at least a rumor tonight that he will, and the place will. I, I mean, the place will go nuts. So he needs to be courtside though, because he's like an all time trash talker. Mm -hmm. Oh God. Yes. So if he's, if he's courtside, he's going to be giving it to like Luca and the rest of the Mavericks. (laughs) So it's basically like having an extra guy on the, on the roster. I don't think KG shows up unless he is courtside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't see him like, but I can't, I can't see him in like section two ten row Z. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, isn't that Kevin Garnett up there near the roof? Yeah, I don't see that either. The guy with his knees and his chest. (laughs) Exactly. Pally, a great report. It's wonderful to have you back, man. I'm sorry you had to go through what you had to go through. That's not very pleasant. Thanks, Pally. We will talk to you next week. Sounds good. Talk to you Tuesday. Thanks. Bye. Judd Zolgad's score north, ladies and gentlemen. Take a break. Be right back. Hi, Tom Bernard for Livia Weight Control Centers. Now is the time to get a jump on summer. You could lose up to 20 pounds or more in your first eight weeks the Livia way. When you join Livia, you'll receive a personalized and doctor-recommended program tailored to your unique needs. Goals, lifestyle, the whole deal is considered. Livia's amazing team of registered dietitians and nutritionists will guide you every step of the way, which is good because I need guidance, believe me. Join Livia today and get your first eight weeks free. Got a uh, message yesterday on Facebook from a man who was on Livia. Great guy. Uh, I don't know him, but he took pictures of himself, sent me the information, popped it up on my website. Lost 107 pounds on Livia. He looks phenomenal. I mean, I didn't think he looked that bad, 107 pounds heavier, but, you know, he uh, dropped 107 pounds and he just, he kicked ass. So when I lose 50, I'll go, well, it's not the best result ever at Livia, but thanks a lot there, pal. You know, at 50 pounds. You got 107. Yeah, no. But in any case, join Livia today. Get your first eight weeks free. Visit Livia.com. That's L-I-V-E-A.com. Call 855-GO-LIVIA. And Livia is now offering GLP-1 medications. 
quiet the food noise and see accelerated results by summer. Visit Livia.com or call 855-GO-LIVIA. Start your weight loss journey now and get a jump on summer the Livia way. I've been tracking the weather in Minnesota for a long time. I'm 5 Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Ken Barlow. In the morning, I've got to be right because my forecast affects your family's entire day. And in the evening, you can count on my friend, Ren. That's right, Ken. I'm 5 Eyewitness News Evening Meteorologist Ren Claire. And as a Minnesotan, I know our weather can be tricky. Throughout the day and into the night, I've got you covered with an accurate forecast to help keep your family safe and ready for any weather. And don't forget, no matter how things change or what time of day, you'll always get our forecast first at the start of every newscast on 5 Eyewitness News. Mm. Start your day with me, Ken Barlow. And wrap up your day with me, Ren Claire. Because 5 Eyewitness News is always tracking our weather. So you're always alerted first. It's why 5 Eyewitness News is Minnesota's weather authority. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. Chris Eggert now joins us. What's happening, Pally? What up? How are you guys? What'd it be like? Freaky deaky? Uh, hey. Yes, freaky deaky. Freaky deaky, man. Look at you tapping into the old cat man there. Cat man. What'd be your sign? I used to get those calls all the time. It was wonderful. Hey, uh, this cat man. I said, yes, yes, dear, it is. Hey, cat man, what'd be your sign? <laughs> I think I'm a Scorpio. Is that, that November? That's a Scorpio deal, isn't it? I'm the wrong person Ooh, to ask. Yeah, I don't know. I I, yeah. I, I, I barely know my own. Right. <laughs> isn't it, wouldn't it be a coincidence, though, that my sign is this death ray little bug that crawls around? Here, Tom, you're a Scorpio. You're a little death ray with shooting people right in the out of your tail or whatever. I that think is. that's a, that sounds badass to me. I'm mine's like somebody who carries water. So wow, big deal. Somebody who carries water around. Aquaman. Mm -hmm. What is it? Aquarius. Aquarius. Aquaman. Same thing. Uh oh, Look I think AJ's us. got the same deal. Look at us, Chris. Are you an Aquarius, AJ? I'm, I'm right in that frame. Now. Aquarius. Okay, what are you, Tevin? Aquarius. Now that we're talking signs. Guess, uh, Aries. Aries. Yep. And. Tom, uh, Scorpio's October 23rd to November 21st. It there looks you like. go. So that's me right there. Oh, yeah. Tevin, you are an Aries. I hate that's I've, I'm I've just kidding. I have no, I have no freaking clue about an Aries. I was just joking. <laughs> that's exactly the type of attitude an Aries would have. I have a yes, friend that's exactly. very into the signs and he'll get on his things. I'm like, I don't really care about the signs. He's like, that's so Aries of you. And I'm like, I just want to strangle you. <laughs> uh, I just got a text message from your mother. She said it's pronounced error. Yeah, that's well. That's a whole, oh, that's a whole different. Oh, thing. Oh, <laughs> that's a whole different setup. Lady. Yeah. So you're an Aries now. What's yeah. an Aries? What, what is it? I don't know. I think it just means we're awesome. I think. Oh is what it means. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cool. That's yeah. what it is. Absolutely. No question about it. The Aries, the best people ever born. Yes. The, okay. You said it, not me. So what's happening this morning, Mr. Egg? We just talked a little bit about that thing going on in Mississippi with the goon squad and guys taking pictures of naked, dead, naked women. And one guy shot another guy in the face, and killed him. And it's like, what is that all about? I got nothing on that. Um, no, our, I big understand. Story, our big story that we had this morning is um, DFL um, State Senator Nicole Mitchell. She mm -hmm. got arrested a couple months ago for breaking into a relative's house right. yep. 
and um, the DFL called for her to resign now. Not not the Republicans, but her own party now is calling on her uh, to resign. So uh, um, it, the session just ended. Yeah. So what a coincidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Take that for what it's worth. Um, we're, we're, we're kind of trying to gather some more, hoping to hear from some more prominent uh, DFLers about what, you know, what the implications of all that are. And it would, it would be a yeah. special session would have to be thrown to fill the seat. And so, you know, it, it, it gets complicated, but that was, that was a big thing we had this morning. And then the women's hockey team bringing home some hardware last night. I'm not sure yes. if you talked yeah. about that. Yep. Um, and yep. then obviously the wolves are going to have another one of those block parties tonight. Going to cost you a dollar to get in, the, to get in. Oh, buck. I don't think I can afford that. What, what's I'm, the point of charging? I know. I, I know. I don't know why that bothers me. I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather pay $10, yes. not a single dollar. Yes. I agree. Cause who has a dollar and then you're going to have a, like a dollar charge. On, what are you gonna have to put it on your card? Like a dollar card charge. And sure. maybe they need it for, like to verify crowd or, you know, by charging a buck, then at least they've got oh, a yeah. check. And I, the last, I, have, I have no idea. The last one was free and you, but you still had to go like reserve a ticket through the app. And so that way they could track the amount. So I don't know if they're just like, we're short, you know, a thousand bucks on rent this month at the target center. We need oh, to, maybe, you know, I don't know. Yeah. It's weird. I have no idea. Could be the deal. Tom, you going to stay up and watch the game. What time does it start? 7 30. Yeah, I can step. Well, I, you know, one of the problems Catherine and I are having, uh, we've only been back less than a week, obviously, yeah. so it'll settle in. Losing that hour going from Eastern time, oh, it makes a to, big difference. It's a huge difference. I'm like, 8 30. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're both just hitting the wall on that deal, but it's getting better night by night, so it'll be all right. I've been staying up and watching the games on school nights. And I, I mean, I get up at three. And oh, so yeah. Yep. To stay up until 1030 to watch. Oh, a game. I remember. But I'm days. so it's I, I just I'll go to bed for the Super Bowl. I'll go to bed for I've gone to bed not knowing the outcome of games for like the last almost, you know, 18 years. Yeah, I'm, but I'm so like emotionally invested in this Timberwolves yeah. team. I'm gonna have a really freaking hard time going to bed I, tonight's gonna be a game time though because I'm so tired. Like the when I'm I'm I've just been wiped from doing that for the last couple of weeks. So I do understand. I used to do the same thing for 37 years. I got up at three o'clock in the morning, so I know exactly what you're going through, man. It it just it's so weird. Well, you know we'd love to come to your party, but Tom's got to go to bed at eight. Like, Jesus. Well, I know you feel so lame. And then everyone's oh like, God, everyone's like, well, you get the whole rest of your day off when you're done. I'm like, yeah, you do. You feel like you want to die 99% of the time. But yes, you do. Um, and I'm not complaining. I'm just the game thing really throws you for a loop because it's like, and even, even people who work somewhat regular hours, like staying up and watching those games every night, particularly when they were out West. Yeah. Like that it's been a, it's been a great run. But on the other hand, I know a lot of people are losing sleep over this team. No doubt about it. But yeah, so you 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 are going to stay up to watch it. I don't know. Three o'clock in then, the morning, maybe. And then the problem is, I'm staying up watching the game. I should probably have a beer too. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Well, I mean, it just you know, it's it's complicated. It's complicated. It is a very complicated thing. No, but you know, well, I guess we're going to find out tomorrow morning if you stayed up or not. I, I, uh, here, I'll, I know I'm, here's how I know I'll I'm, know. Okay. I will know if we start, the ladies and gentlemen, Chris Eggert brought to you by Channel 5's, you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the first words out of your mouth will be, shut up, Tom. Yeah, that's. <laughs> and I know um, you stayed up too long. The last. The, the next days after those late nights, the oh, newscasts yeah. are a little rougher than maybe they should be. But. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no question. All right. I know you got to go, but I want to ask you a question first. Yeah. This Nicole, what's her name that got probably get the hook? Uh, Mitchell. Where does she serve? Um, She's like East Metro. East Metro? Wood yeah. Woodbury area. Woodbury? Yeah. Ryan Winkler. Bring him back. Replace her with Ryan Winkler. He's a Democrat. He's a DFLer. 
Brian what's Winkler great. doing now? I don't even remember. I don't even know what he's doing, but he's a great guy, very, very good at his job. Are sure are we sure he's not still? He went shoulder to shoulder with Pat Garofalo, who's another great guy, one Democrat, one Republican, showing people the way that everybody should get along. Yeah, she's gonna be replaced. Ryan Winkler, you heard me. Get it done. Uh, he might still be. I don't think so. Oh no, yeah. House no. from 2019 to 2022. Well, there you go. I can't he came up recently. I can't remember if he's doing consulting or something. Get off your ass, Winkler. Get back uh, serving the people. Well, right? uh, listen, uh, Tom, we'll just give you the power to fill the seat. How's that sound? I bet well, then it's Ryan Winkler. We're done. It's over. Everything's good. But there I heard you go. Pat Garoppolo is um, thinking about retiring too, which is that's unfortunate because I really like him too. Great guy. All right. Try to pretend you're working the rest of the day, will you? Yeah, I'm going to go talk about taxidermy now is one of the many things I'm doing today. So I'm, I'm going to hold an elk skull, which I've never done. So, yeah, that'll be something. All right. You never put your hand behind an elk's noggin? No. Oh, I was just wondering. I mean, a freaking elk, man. You see how big those things are? They are rather large. Yes, you're Dude, absolutely. That thing could just like not even intentionally uh, brush you away and put a Put a horn right through the heart. Pow, pow. Jesus, you, you're in this. You're involved in this thing, man. All right, I gotta go. He really commits to the story. <laughs> he really does. He's Jesus. committed. All right, gotta go. See you. All right, Pally, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks a lot. Channel 5's Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. We shall take a break. Be right back. A little news and information up next. Why should your business bank with North American Banking Company? Here's Landon and Gavin Miller of D&B Plating. I've always been impressed with their speed of answers to our questions, uh, and that has allowed us to expand and capitalize on opportunities in the market. North American Banking Company has never made us feel like a number. They've always treated us as a partner. For more information about North American Banking Company, go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. KNL Surplus and Ammo in Lana Lakes is my choice for firearms and ammunition. Jim, the owner, is one of the most knowledgeable people in the business and is great at getting you into the right firearm for your needs. We've talked about that before. You need the right firearm. Jim's a guy who can get it done for you. KNL Surplus and Ammo now carries Benelli shotguns that offer enhanced performance, amazing reliability for uses ranging from waterfowl hunting to skeet shooting and more. I highly encourage you to stop in, talk with Jim. And the rest of the KL Surplus crew, between their superior knowledge of firearms, friendly customer service, overall stock, and fair pricing, I can't imagine a better location to purchase your next firearm. KL Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive in the Line of Lakes, open Tuesday through Saturday. You can reach them by phone at 763 757 2614, or you can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You are. There's no question about it. Chris Eggert, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, what could be better? You got Judd Zolgad. You got Chris Eggert. Brad Blanks is going to join us in about so about 25 minutes. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm excited. After nine. Oh, I am, too. I love Brad Blanks. Great guy. Don't you think? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. It's all true, ladies and gentlemen. Just looking at some headline. Caffeine delay. Should you wait 90 minutes before your first cup of coffee? Why would you do that? Because don't you drink coffee to wake up? Yeah, I mean, 
it's probably like uh, letting your car warm up before you just put it in drive and take off in the winter. You got to let your body boot up naturally because it probably shocks the system with the caffeine. <laughs> well, I'm doing my car and my body the <laughs> terrible favors because I get up and just just get a cup. And most people do, no doubt about it. Have you heard this term yet? The New York Times did a big write-up on something called caffeine delay or the idea that it's better to wait an hour or two before your first cup of coffee. I would like to know something. According to the national news now, do we do anything right? No. 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 Nothing we do is right. And once we start doing it the way they say we should do it, they go, ah, maybe you should have done it the different, <laughs> a different way. Actually. A new study found yeah. that you've been actually doing it wrong. Exactly. A, uh, a ton of influencers claim you get a bigger energy boost if you wait, and it might be true, but is it worth it? According to experts, only if you want to limit yourself to one cup of coffee a day. Caffeine works by binding to receptors in your brain and blocking a chemical that makes you drowsy called adenosine. Uh, your adenosine levels are at their lowest right after you wake up, so there's a, less, of a, less of it to block, I suppose. That's why an immediate cup of coffee might not do as much as it would when you're dragging later in the day. Well, then just have another cup of coffee. What? <laughs> it's not going to kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I, well, oh, I'm sorry. Go no, ahead. I was gonna, like, I've always had the rule for myself of after noon, one o'clock, we're not going to have coffee yeah. because, you know, at that point, you can't you don't, sleep. Yeah. Exactly. But, you know, if I want to have two cups, like you have one at seven, have one at like nine, nine thirty, by all means. Absolutely. Go ahead. I think there was a point in my life, though, that Catherine once came to me and said, <clears throat> I was observing you all day today and I did the uh, comparison. And do you know you've had about 2,500 gram, milligrams of caffeine today? Oof. I think you're supposed to have like 400. Yeah, I think like three, 400 is the magic number. Yeah. Apparently seven or eight times that is not what you're supposed to be doing. I would get so nervous if somebody said, I've been observing you today. Oh, that's Catherine, though. She <laughs> observes. What did I do? What did I do? What did yeah, I do? There's never good news after that. It's never <laughs> been, I observe you doing some really good stuff for the yep. community. No, it's always bad. Uh, pretty much true. There's no question about it. Uh, but for most people, there's no harm in having a second cup of coffee later. You'll still get that bigger boost. Plus just the thought of coffee helps some people wake up. So if that first sip is what gets you out of bed in the morning, then go for it. Uh, I, I do agree with AJ though, that, uh, afternoon cut way back on the, on mm -hmm. the caffeine. Yeah. I would agree with that. It's, it always throws me off when I'll go to like a diner or something for like, mm -hmm. you know, maybe a late lunch, early dinner. And I see, you know, and it, it not to be stereotypical here, but it's always a senior citizen. They're like, "Yeah, I want a pot of coffee." It's mm -hmm. like, "Sir, it's seven o'clock." <laughs> a pot? I want the whole pot, baby. Yeah, give give me the whole pot. God, I do remember that actually having pots of coffee brought to your little booth there at the. <laughs> oh, my dad was like that. It didn't matter oh, really? what time of day. <laughs> coffee, more coffee. Like goes for a run, more coffee. I just all the caffeine, please. That's my mother though too. My mother drank coffee. She she had the uh, the coffee in the right hand and the cigarette in the left hand, and she lived to be almost eighty eight years old. So God bless her. Yep. And I wish I could do an impression of my mother's voice, but I, my voice is not deep enough. <laughs> After all that coffee and and cigarettes is like, good morning, Tom. Yeah. And I think people back in the day are more hardy than people now because like my grandma, for example, she smoked every, first thing in the morning was a cup of coffee and a cigarette and like every morning at like 5 a.m. And she's still around and kicking. She's up in her upper 80s. Like but now today it's like if you smoke one cigarette, you're probably going to die by the time you're 35. Like <laughs> so either the cigarettes are stronger or they're just more hardy back in the day. You know what's weird? I did not. I think I brought this up to you guys before, but I smoked from the time I was like 11 till I was, I think, 21, maybe. Mm -hmm. But I realized, and I didn't know this because I French inhaled. I never inhaled the smoke. I would inhale up my nose and it'd come right out my mouth. Yeah. So it, would, it never went in my lungs. So I guess that was a good thing. I didn't know that was happening. All right. You just thought you're being cool. I thought I was being a very cool thing. Hey, man, let me tell you. Whether it was old golds, lark cigarettes, then it was, then of course I moved on to uh, Newports. Mm -hmm. Oh boy, got to get get the calf uh, the uh, the uh, what the hell's that called again? They, they said it was made for black people. So what the hell is uh -huh. it again? It, it's the God. I can't believe that the menthol cigarette. Menthol. Oh, there okay, you go. Right. I said the only cigarettes I've smoked are candy <laughs> cigarettes. Yes. There you go. That 
which are terrible. You know, what's kind of interesting is as we were driving home, you could tell like in, in Florida, Southern Florida, you don't see a lot of people smoking. Mm -hmm. But then once I got into Georgia and all the way through basically Iowa, you saw a lot of people smoking. And then once you got to Minnesota, nobody smoked again. It was really interesting. Yeah. The only time that I really ever tried that was, uh, besides the candy ones, obviously. Yes. Know, right. Addicted to those. Um, it, after high school graduation, me and some buddies, we were getting ready. We had a foreign exchange student from, from Norway. We were, he was going back to Norway the, like the next day or the day after or whatever. And we all got uh, cigars to like mm. celebrate oh, graduating. Sure. Terrible. Yep. awful just the worst thing of all time no clue how anybody does it it looks super cool with like this like the sarge and the army in the movies where he's got it like hanging out the side of his mouth right <laughs> absolutely was terrible never again yeah that's smoking uh, I, I don't remember it being, being all that present uh pleasant anyway to you no no, no. <laughs> i mean i don't know i just i love these we'll take a very quick break here but i love these and i know they're just they're morning show kind of radio kind of deals but i still love the five random facts for Thursday. Oh, yeah. Even though I don't know what they are, we'll be back in just a couple minutes with the five random facts for your Thursday right after this. Mike Lindell and MyPillow employees want to thank my listeners for all your continued support. To thank you, they're having an overstock clearance and new product sale right now for the best prices ever. When you use promo code TOM, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. Also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses and mattress toppers. 100% made in the USA on sale for as low as $99.99. Everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels that have the same technology as the bath towels that actually absorb dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and so much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you can get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146, go to MyPillow.com, and use promo code TOM. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. When you go to a restaurant, you expect a chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. You're damn right you are. Little news, little information. Brad Blanks will join us in just about 15 minutes. Looking forward to that because Brad, we don't have Brad on enough. We got to start getting Brad on more often. Yeah. Is he just being lazy? Is that well, the plan? I feel like he thinks that he needs to have an Adam Sandler type interview oh, in order to come on because he's very like, well, what do you guys want to talk? About? I'm like, Brad, we can talk about whatever you want. I just need you to come on here with your accent and yep. make us laugh and then you can call yeah. it a day. That guy could tell me what the sandwich he had for lunch yesterday and I'd be entertained. Yep. I <laughs> so. agree. No question. 
Plus the fact he's what is he an inch taller than you are, so you need somebody taller than you are. Yeah, yeah. he's huge and he's like a big guy. Doing radio, like you never see them, so you just no. assume like, oh, he's just probably an average size guy. And then yeah, you see the Adam Sandler interview where he just keeps <laughs> where he stands up and then he keeps standing up and then he keeps standing up some more. The best, no question about it. Five random facts for Thursday. I know this is, you know, hokey ass radio stuff, but I still love this kind of stuff. I mean, I just do, you know, that's not a yeah, crime, I think is that's it? That's all right. Though. Right. Especially when you get some good facts in, like, let's do it. Yeah, some good facts. There you go. That's a good way to put it. Here are some random facts for you. Uh, when cellophane was being invented in the early 1900s, it was originally intended to be used to protect tablecloths from people spilling wine on them. Did you know that's why cellophane was invented? No, but that's no a idea. hell of a invention for a problem that was probably, like, I wouldn't think was that big of a I, issue back in the day. I would have to agree with you. Was it really that big a deal that, I mean, this is, God, this screen, I'm trying to get it down to that good. So there it is. I finally did it. I'm not very talented at that because I got clubs for hands. Is that why? Yeah, I mean, you can't be good at everything. There's got to be at least something that or you're anything. not great at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something like that, too. There were Chryslers that had built-in record players. I I actually do remember seeing one. Like the big vinyl yes. record? Oh, my gosh. Yep. That's wild. I've seen I've only seen that in movies and it it's been like a you know a millionaire billionaire like the oh, yeah. that oh, type yeah. of guy but I'm sure I'm sure if they put it in there it's probably a real thing but how do, you said you remember it was that like a mainstream like you could get it in like a nowadays like a Toyota Camry just like that or was no. it, it it was like a it was a rich person okay. deal okay, okay. Was, that, was there room to sit with a record player <laughs> in your car didn't look like it no. <laughs> I will tell you that and then of course they had phones in the car mm -hmm. and there were actual like home phone you guys even remember the home phones where they were wired to the thing that sat on the desk oh, oh yeah absolutely. my my grandma had one that was a rotary phone Ro as well and oh remember, rotary yeah. as well i i love seeing the videos of like people bringing their kids like an old museum and they're like yep dial 911 for me on this phone and the kids are just like they're like trying to put their finger in the <laughs> hole and they're like they're like why is it ro why is it spinning what do i do it's just it's yeah because they think you just put your finger in a hole and that dials the number yeah yeah yeah, you're absolutely right. I've seen that happen before. But yeah, record players in cars. They, there were Chryslers that had built-in record players from 1956 to 1958. They malfunctioned so often that Chrysler dropped them after a few years. Well, yeah. if you hit a bump. I was just going to say, the needle just skips constantly. <laughs> I, would think, <laughs> I would think so. You know who had one in a movie? I think it was Dean Martin. I think that's that makes that I think that's sense. what I'm thinking. Of. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, I think Dean Martin had one in some movie he did. I don't remember what movie, but uh God, I loved watching that guy. He guy could sing, he could act, he was great on stage, the whole deal. What a talent that man was. Did you know that he used to throw parties at his house to go to Dean Martin's house for a party? And about halfway through the party, he would just disappear because he'd go upstairs and go to bed. <laughs> That sounds that sounds about right. That's what I would do. <laughs> it's like you guys do whatever you want. I'm going to bed. Yep. And but he wouldn't tell anybody. He would all of a sudden just disappear and he'd be upstairs asleep. That's great. Dean Martin. God, what a talent. Very sad though. Sad ending to his life because his son got killed in a plane crash. I think it was in the Air Force at the time, I think. Um, God, I can't remember the son's name. It might have been Dino too. But he got killed in a plane crash, and from that day on, Dean Martin just couldn't really function. Mm -hmm. He'd go to the same Italian restaurant, have the same order of spaghetti. He would eat that and go home and go to bed. He just, Jeez. it destroyed him that he lost his son. I mean, it was unbelievable. 61%, excuse me, 61.2% of Americans who fought in World War II were drafted. I thought it would be more than that. Drafted into World War II, I would have thought it would have been about 90% of the people. Yeah, because I, I feel like anytime you hear somebody talk about the draft, if they make it seem like everybody was drafted. Yeah, right. Like if you were between 18 and whatever, 25, just might as well just walk yourself over there right now. I actually just saw footage of the of like the draft a week or two ago. Very weird. It was like they had it like a game show or like a... <laughs> like just, a military draft yeah yeah it really would, yeah they, it was uh so what they would do is they put like 
pieces of paper, like ping pong balls, like it's the, like the NBA lottery or whatever. Oh. And they pull it out and it's like February 19th. And so oh, like, yeah. Yeah. You're born on February 19th. You're the first to report. And so it's, you're just sitting there around the, the television probably. And you're like, not August 12th, not, not August 12th. And then they just go through and it's like they would just say all these dates. And so it just very oh. weird, weird thing to like make peppy and happy. Yeah. Like the president walks out and he's like with the first pick in the – <laughs> World War Two draft, February twelfth. Okay. I they I remember mine. They did the drawing when I was eighteen because you're eighteen, I think, when you're uh, eligible for the draft. Mm -hmm. They did the drawing, November seventh, number twenty seven. My friend Tommy O'Brien, February seventeenth, number three sixty four. It's like really. Uh, really, 364, like you're ever going in, they ain't <laughs> happening, man. That's Tommy O'Brien listens to this. I better behave. There's no question about it. But, yeah, I, I I do remember, though, because I was lifting a lot of weights back then. I started mm -hmm. lifting weights 16, 17, 18. I'm, you know, the draft's 18. So I got on for my draft physical because I was drafted. I got on for the draft physical. I had a double hernia from lifting weights. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, we can't possibly if it was a single hernia we could fix it but a double hernia would take too long so you're, you're just not eligible to uh to go into the service i was drafted into the marine corps as a matter of fact but they said you're not eligible to go in because it just it would take too long and it just wouldn't work and blah 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 but the sergeant wants to talk to you before you leave i said okay you got it sergeant hate h-a-i-g-h-t okay sergeant hate okay I sat down across from him, and the reason he wanted to see me is so he could say, Tom, I, I wouldn't worry about this double hernia situation. You can get it repaired and all the rest of it. And even if you get it repaired, you wouldn't be eligible for the draft anyway. But, you know, asked after meeting you, you're probably the kind of guy should stay home with the women anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He took a, he had to take a shot at me. Wow. He just had to do it. Right. And I'm like, yeah, okay. Say whatever. what you want. I'm just going to be staying over here where it's safe. Like, <laughs> exactly. Okay, what you call me? There's no question about it. Yeah, that he enjoyed the, taking shots at me on the way out. No question about it. It's like, yeah, pain in the ass, big baby. Broccoli has, oh, I didn't know this. Broccoli has almost twice as much v, uh, vitamin C as oranges. Did you even know that? No, not no. at all. Broccoli has vitamin C in it. I didn't know that. I'll tell you what, I'll still rather have an orange though. Yes. Oh, God, I love oranges. Like broccoli's good, but yeah, yep. you know, just a ripe orange. You know, it's so weird because when I was a kid, I was never a big vegetable or fruit person. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, bananas. I like bananas. Mm -hmm. They're always magnificent. There's no question about it. But now, man, I don't think there's a fruit or a vegetable I don't like. Is there any vegetable you that you just don't want to eat? Mushrooms. You don't like mushrooms at no, all? I'm a mushroom fan. Even I, grilled mushrooms? You can't do it. Okay. I don't like, my mom loves sausage and mushroom pizza. I can't mm -hmm. stand it. No, I agree with that. I don't like mushrooms on a pizza. It's, that I agree with. I just don't, they're rubbery. They don't really, mm -hmm. they don't really have a lot of taste, which is weird to say that yeah. I don't like them then, yep. but it's just like, it's the texture. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of people say that about like coconut. I love coconut on stuff, but like, oh. that's how I feel about mushrooms. It's just... They're kind of slimy to me. They're they're rubbery. It's bland. I just you know, go in the trash. Yep. Stay away. Is there any okay? So your favorite pizza? My favorite pizza is just a flat out pepperoni pizza. That's my favorite. I love them. There are other pizzas that I'll eat. Don't get me wrong, but uh, I don't like it when it's like this putting pineapple on there and it's like no eh. leave the pineapple off the pizza exactly you don't need it um yeah i'm fine with pepperoni little sausage pizza we yeah, can get sausage. some jalapenos or whatever on there what's but, your yeah. like go-to order if you're getting just for yourself for dinner oh Ooh. Uh, <laughs> probably like a, just a sausage pepperoni pizza i'm very oh. unless it's like a gourmet like if i go to a rectangle pizza they have this pepperoni and hot honey Ooh. pizza that's delicious really yeah that's where is that uh, it's called rectangle pizza where is that uh there's one downtown i think there's a, there's a couple locations around the cities but yeah they're phenomenal and it's like a I think it's Detroit style it's like the square, the square Ooh, yeah. yep. so, so yep. everything's got a crust to it yep oh, yeah that's so good I gotta find one of those I wonder if there's yep. anyone near me oh. somebody looked it up rectangle pizza is there one in uh, the western suburbs anywhere 
that'd see. be good. Because I see, yeah, that's the other thing. My favorite pizza is the big round flat crust pizza. I love that. But once in a while, you throw in that, like you said, Detroit style, Chicago style. Mm -hmm. Chicago style is a little too much crust for me. A lot of crust in a Chicago yeah. style pizza, but I do love man. There are people that do not like pizza, which shocks the hell. How could you not like pizza? That doesn't make any sense. No, no sense. Even bad pizza <laughs> is still decent pizza. Like <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> that's like the the whole the joke about like dogs or cats. You know what's cuter than the cutest best cat? Any dog. Yes. <laughs> oh, poor kitties. <laughs> Kitty's taking a shot. Uh, it looks like there's three rectangle pizza locations. One in uh, the North Loop, one in Malcolm Yards, and one in Lynn Lake, which I don't really know where that where is. Where's Malcolm Yards? Uh, looks like Dinky Townish area. That's Malcolm Yards? Yeah, like past, if you go through Dinky Town, kind of like you're going to Hubbard almost. Um, it looks like there's one over there, and then Uptown on Lake Street. So it's Uptown on Lake Street, and then the one you're, you have is Downtown. Yep, in the North Loop. I think it's right across from... Um, Bar La Grassa? Oh, is it? Oh, yeah, yeah, it's the, like like right across. I get that black sheep Bar La Grassa type. Oh, of yeah, okay. I didn't realize how close. Yeah, there there is one that's right over by the Hubbard Building. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to uh -oh. go out of my way. <laughs> Don't <laughs> now, what's that? Me. What's that one? Um, that's right over by uh, by Surly. That's the Malcolm Yards one. Oh, that's Malcolm mm -hmm. Yards. Okay. Yeah, so it's over in the Prospect Park, Dinky Town area. So I live in a far too honky, no Italian area. Well, it looks like all of these are in. They're in like food hall type things. It's not yeah. like a standalone. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that red Savoy is tough for me to beat, man. I love red Savoy. Oh, pizza. So good. Delicious. Don't you think? Yeah. That's one. That's probably one of the top. Like them and pizza. Pizza Luce. I pizza feel like Luce are what, like too. the Minnesota staples as far as pizza goes. Definitely. Why don't we have some pizza brought in for tomorrow's show? We'll have breakfast pizza. Oh yeah. Dog. Oh, Wrap, so it <laughs> Wrap it up. Who has who has breakfast pizza? I don't know, but somebody I close, don't know. Close, <laughs> close circuit to Bernie. Find us a pizza sponsor. Yeah, Bernie, get yeah. off your ass. Let's go. I, dude, let's, I mean, I, let's just get Casey's. Yeah. Casey's breakfast pizza. It's a, it's gas station pizza, but it's fantastic. If it's fa well, yeah. we should have somebody go. Casey's it pizza is a sneaky good yes. pizza. Like really? people knock it because it's a gas station, but like my mom, like they have a Casey's out in uh, Hutchinson where she lives, and she's like. Oh yeah, try this Casey's pizza and like it's from a gas station. Like, oh, okay, it's from a gas station. Yeah, could it yep. be? It's very, very good. It's like good. a top five slept on pizza. I was trying to think if I've ever had a pizza that I just hated, but I don't think I ever have. There's got to be some yeah. really bad ones, I would think, but I don't like, think I've ever had. Yeah, one. like Pizza Hut. Not a huge fan, yeah, but like okay, at the end yeah. of the day, again, it's pizza. Yeah. No, it's true. We'll take a break, ladies and gentlemen. Brad Blanks will join us right after this. Why should your business bank with North American Banking Company? Here's Landon and Gavin Miller of D&B Plating. I've always been impressed with their speed of answers to our questions, uh, and that has allowed us to expand and capitalize on opportunities in the market. North American Banking Company has never made us feel like a number. They've always treated us as a partner. For more information about North American Banking Company, go to nabanco.com or stop by any one of their Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and ship issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. I hosted my show on the radio for 40 years. Now I host the Tom Bernard podcast, and I'll tell you, I've never seen the passion and engagement from our audience as I do now. I know we also have businesses that listen to our podcast, and it got me thinking, wouldn't it be great to help those businesses grow by telling my listeners about them? 
So here's the deal. If you own or handle marketing for a business, would like to have my audience buy your product or service, visit TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner, and we'll put together an ad campaign to help your business. That's TomBernardShow.com, keyword partner, and thank you for listening. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Oh, we have to look at them too? Nobody told <laughs> me that. Hey, hey, Tom, how are you, mate? Brad, hey, where guys. the hell have you been? Mate, I've been deep underground. Like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm deep into this parenting world, as you know. You're a grandfather legend. You've raised uh, a couple of wonderful children. They're mm-hmm. prospering in the outside world, and um, and uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just, I, I just sort of buttoning down the hatches. Everything's good. Got a 14 year old boy, as you know, Harvey. 12 year old girl, Matilda. Harvey's 14. Oh, oh my yeah. god. Yes, yes, yes. Oh uh, nine, he was born. I think I went live with you the morning of the explosive birth. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah it was. It did. He, yeah, he nearly killed his mother. It was very, uh, it was very uh, oh, House of Dragons God. birth, but she lived. The mother lived. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, plenty of blood and guts. Uh, a lot left on the floor, which, I, yeah, which is a bit, you know, uh, a bit overwhelming when you're the dad saying stuff on the floor. But uh, we got through it, and he's uh, he's all right. He, he can swing a golf club, and I say. That's all you need in America. If you can swing a golf club, you're going to be yeah, fine yeah. in this country. <laughs> yeah. That's absolutely so, true. No, fact, he's, yeah, he's good. To tie to tie that in, you talk about leaving a mess on the floor. Yes. Natural childbirth, too. This was not cesarean. Oh. Natural childbirth. When yeah. I was born, I was 23 inches long and weighed 11 pounds. Nope. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You imagine your mom, that? Your, mom, your mom's in the stirrups, legs up, ready to go, right? <laughs> she had to stay in there for the rest of her life. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what about your buddy? Um, geez, Louis Anderson's mom popped a few out too, didn't she? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Louis yeah, is a she, big kid too. Yeah, he could have been a big kid. Yeah. When did, did you did you ever can you remember the first moment you and him crossed paths? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he showed up in Las Vegas. We did a uh, show at Treasure Island. God, what was that? Thirty year, thirty five years ago now, something like that. Yeah. And we're sitting up at the Treasure Island uh, in Vegas, and all of a sudden, Louis Anderson walks in, and with him because we had a pretty big audience. Yeah. He brought, I believe, 25 boxes of donuts with him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jeez. I remember. I'll That's... never forget that. Was that like a, was that a Minnesotan uh, standoff? Like, you know, two legends of media and entertainment and comedy. You know, were you like two big bulls looking at each other um, and then became friends? Like, how did it take you that long to not meet a, meet meet each other on the mean streets of Minnesota, because before before I took this job, that job at the Q, yeah, um, I I just literally lived in I was Catherine and I lived in New York, and I got the call from Dave Hamilton said, uh, "Hey, you want to come and do the morning show at the Q?" I right. said, "Good." So I hadn't been in Minnesota, and I spent most of my time before that in the previous 15, 20 years constantly on airplanes because that was before you know the uh, internet so right. i had every time i did a voiceover i had to fly to new york chicago los angeles atlanta wherever the the commercial was i had to go there to record it yeah so i was right. never in minnesota there for a long long time so all of a sudden coming back uh starting starting the uh kq morning show yeah. Then all of a sudden I started running in all these people that I had never met. And Louis Anderson was, was one of those people. Oh, that's, that's great. That's a great origin story. Cause I, I had this, I thought you guys might've met in a pub or a club or something like in, you know, both when you were 19 oh, year olds or something. Really? Yeah. So we, we were in the tub together. Is that what you were thinking? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's <a plan. laughs> Oh, that's very good. Very good. Um, no, but, uh, that's great. That's, that's, that's a good insight into your career that a lot of these people that you've met were after you s- decided to stay in one place and, and talk into a microphone every day of the week, right? Yeah, and that's why I had I met so many famous people too because a lot of famous people in New York would show up to yeah. do the voiceover or try, you know, to do voiceovers uh, or audition for them or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and and so I met a lot of guys, you know, that way, men and women that way as well. But yeah, it was it was the hell of a, I've had a hell of you know, I look back at it now, it's like I, I I'd love to complain, but I really can't. No. I'm mean, I've been sitting behind a microphone since I was about 18 years old. That's not real hard. 
whether it's doing radio or podcasting or, or voiceover or whatever it is, it's not really a hard job to sit here and go, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. right? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, I, I love that. Yeah. You know, um, and it's uh, from what I can gather, politically, you are, you've leaned into the center. Is, is oh, that God, how it's softened yes, for right. you? Yeah. I can't take it yeah. anymore. The, yeah, it's good. The viciousness yeah. from these two parties has just, it's pushed me toward the center. And of course, mm -hmm. now what I've done is now both sides are pissed off at me. Right, now that's the right. Democrats <laughs> hate me and the Republicans hate me. And it's like, oh my God. Right. What right. A, <laughs> how does it go when you go down to the local golf club? Are people still nice to you? Like, uh, Not, you know, I haven't played golf in like five, six years. I've played oh, a wow. couple of times. Catherine and I started playing this winter a little bit. Oh, good. I love playing yep. golf with Catherine and stuff. She beats yep. me. But other than that, you know, I know what, so what about nice. dinners, though, in the dip when you have your dinners and that? Oh, yeah, yeah. we still do that stuff with the kids. Matter of fact, we're going to yeah. go this weekend. Going to go. They changed the name of the Golden Valley Country Club. They changed the name now because we're, you know, progressive. <laughs> it's no longer the Golden Valley Country Club, it's now the Club at Golden Valley. Oh, oh, that's very oh, progressive. Yeah, wow. it's like yeah, yeah. That's um, Ooh. that sounds sounds like a place that Larry David would be a member of. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. that's exactly. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's good. Did you did you watch the finale or did you, of Curb Your Enthusiasm or did you, I didn't watch yeah. it after a while. I I had a. Yeah. I'm one of those guys to be honest with you. If I meet the star of it and I don't care for them, I just stop watching their show. And I I met Larry David and he's oh, not sure. a very pleasant person. <laughs> <laughs> but some people want him to be that person. Oh, right? I know. Oh, him. there's no doubt about that. There's no question. Right. Oh, yeah, he and so Seinfeld are not very. They're not my kind of people. I got to be honest. With yeah. You. Well, he's not very effervescent, uh, Jerry Seinfeld either. You know, is he? No. No, no, I've had – well, it's, I'm in that weird scenario, Tom, because coming to America and especially moving to New York was like a childhood dream and and loving sure. Seinfeld so, so much. And, um, no, I understand and then that. And then I got to meet him and I had the same experience with Jerry. Yep. And, um, and I've managed to overcome – his initial meanness to me, and um, and, mean and, uh, and, mean. and I'm, I'm fine with that. I, I still love, like, I, I'm actually, I will take the battery from him because I still love him and I still love Seinfeld the show. And uh, and he was in the finale of Curb, and I still love seeing him turn up. And I've put it down to just how he is that's his it's makeup. So and I've watched a lot, I've watched a lot of these interviews. He, I mean, he it's 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 incredible media blitz. I don't think he's ever done a media blitz like he's done over the last yeah. five weeks. Yeah, that's um, true. Yeah, and it, he even um, he even made Bill Maher in an interview um, seem soft and gentle. Yeah, God, um, Bill Maher has been all over television. He's, he's, been, on he's been on He's been on Fox. He's been on everything now. Yeah, he's been everywhere too. Yeah, um, but him and him and Jerry had an interesting tussle where. Oh, I bet. Um, yeah, Jerry said he doesn't take compliments from people, doesn't believe in compliments. And no, Bill Maher, Bill Maher, uh, Bill Maher said, "But a compliment from me, I'm surely better than a compliment on the street." And Jerry said, "No, nah, any compliment I don't like." And Bill Maher okay. really took offense to that, and because um, Bill Maher was like, "A compliment from a friend is a good thing." Yeah. Well, let me ask you a question. Was, yeah. If that's true about Seinfeld, why is he still mad at me? Because he's been <laughs> such a dick to me that finally at the very end of me talking to him, I said, I got to tell you the honest God truth. I love Seinfeld, but you're the worst part of it. <laughs> you said that to him? <laughs> yes. He did. He sucked on that show. He, yeah, 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 he didn't yeah, yeah. suck, but he, everybody uh, else on the show is better than he yeah, was. That's right. No, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're you exactly were. right. You're, so yeah, I right. had to point that out to him. He didn't really yeah. appreciate that much. No, no, no. What's well, he um, I see. Oh, that's true. I don't know. He actually might like that. I reckon he likes the whipping. The whipping. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's a possibility. So, that yeah, is a possibility. The, um, well, uh, the, uh, I see uh, Kramer, uh, Michael Richards, has a book out as well. So well, How's know, he um, doing since the yeah, colored oh, guy yeah. thing? He's, oh, my. He's <laughs> scrambling trying to get, yeah, get back yeah. in the good grace. Yeah, that wasn't yeah. a smart move there. No. What, talk about blowing yourself up. Yeah. You know, um, Jeez. He dropped the big end, didn't he? He actually used the oh, big yeah. end. Yeah, it was it was a very long, uncomfortable rant he went on, <laughs> and it was and it was like Kramer, the guy from Science. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, he went, yeah, he went hardcore historical too in his abuse. Yes. Yeah, oh, when, yes. when you start doing his his when you start doing um you know bad words from two hundred years ago, that's a you are off you you are you've lost it. 
Yeah, yeah so. no question about it. Yeah, yeah well, um, but but yeah. I but I enjoyed Curb Your Enthusiasm, and I I I, I loved finishing it. And uh, it's sad that show's over because uh, mm -hmm. you know it was a great show. I remember I watched it in your basement when I was drunk one night, Tom. You had a lot of people I don't know over. What you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, you had, a, you had like a like a you had a cake. You had like a barbecue or something, and then I went missing because I found this big television in your basement, <laughs> and um, um, and I was like, "This is the biggest television I hit." I put on HBO and I just started watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, drinking beers out of. I found a bar, and it was like, "Where's bar, so yeah, yeah, where, where, where?" And I was crazily, it was a Thursday night. I think I was staying the night. I think I stayed the night. Now I think I about think it. you did. Yeah, oh, did I? I think yeah, I did. Was, anyway, yeah. it was because I had to be in your studio by six a.m. this morning, but I just sat in your sat in your basement with this massive TV and uh, I've never seen a TV that big and I'm just watching Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know, about four episodes in a row and I'm just smashing beers. And I, you know, maybe your wife picked me up and put me on a couch or something because I was in these big, like, uh, you know, uh, theatre seats. They were beautiful yeah. seats with a, yep. you know, kickback in them and I was like, this is this is a way to live. You know, like, this is life. <laughs> you know, I said, I said, when I grow up, I want to be like Tom. Yeah, I want to be like Tom, but have a big, big, big theater and a big TV and just watch HBO. Those when are boys. you going to grow up? Yeah, no, 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 that's the problem. <laughs> We're gonna I mean, have. Look, look, I, I, hey, Tom, I'm in my 50th year. I'm, I'm turning 50 later in the what? year. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Brad so, Blanks um, is 50 yeah, years old. <laughs> no, it's crazy. I know. Because, yeah, yeah. Because a, a lot of people, a lot of your listeners over the years who have never seen my big head always think that I'm like five foot four. <laughs> Uh, peroxide, per, peroxide blonde hair and a really good surfer, and I'm and I'm everything. I'm not. I'm I'm not very cool. I've got like Kelsey Grammer forehead. Um, I'm six foot five, and um, and I weigh about two hundred and fifty two pounds. Yeah, there you um, go. Yeah, yeah. So I'm a big big bastard. But um, but no, I no, it's, always it's, tell the um, story about yeah. when you wanted to go. Tom, take me through the ghetto where you grew up. I I want to see your neighborhood. Yeah. You lasted three blocks. Well, was, yeah, yeah, you, mate. We were a carjacking waiting to happen. You had the bloody convertible down. Yeah, like I said, Jesus. Yeah, I, I think you had a convertible. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a red, red, red vehicle. It was a red. Yeah. Was your yep. vehicle red? Yeah. I said, don't have a red vehicle, Jesus. Like keep a it red key. convertible. Yeah, yeah. And there were there were drug deals going on down the sides of houses, and <laughs> and then one and one guy chased us from a um, bus he stop, did. and you didn't. And I said. Put your foot down. You, you go, don't worry, you'll be fine. And you, you, you engage with this. You engage with this man. I and did. The, and, yeah. the, and 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 you actually, the man was really endeared. He was a madman, but you quelled him. So you have like, you, you, Tom, you you know what you were doing? You were reverse crocodile Dundeeing me. Like, uh, I, if, yeah, like if I if I took you to the outback, I would make a buffalo sit down. Where right. you took sure. me to yeah. your outback, and you quelled. Um, the crazy people. So, um, yes, I, 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 well done. That was a great memory. <laughs> I have to know you. You cannot be absent from this show for these long periods, man. We need you on the show. You, we yeah. love our listeners. Love you. The people in this oh, room you. love you. Oh, great! Like, no, no, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I hopefully I get to. I've, I've got to do. I've been a bit lazy on my red carpet, so um, I do this uh, sports report every week on uh, Channel Nine, which is a big TV station oh, big in, in Australia. Yeah, big. It's back to Australia, but look, the TVs. Look, that's right. Mate, I was a big shot when I was on your show. That was, uh, you know, that was they were the good, the great days. I was, you know, I, my first ten years in media, I was on your show and I was on the you know, Scott and Todd show at PLJ. Yeah, and sure. They were like incredible days of my life. But so I do this, yeah. You know, who and, and back those days, all I wanted to be was try to, you know, get on somehow, get on television somehow. And I never got on. I got on this TV show three or four years ago, and I've been doing a segment every week and. Um, and it's been going well, but I have no real want to be on, you know, TV or whatever. So I get on there and I just sort of do a mm -hmm. mini radio segment on with these guys and be a little bit crazy. But I explain, um, try to explain U.S. sports and the absurdity of your amazing sporting culture to Australians. <laughs> and it's, um, oh, it, if you take a step back and look at American sports and what goes on around it, it is so there is so much comedy. And the you know like from you know guys drinking beer with babies at the baseball and catching baseballs oh, you know, yeah. in the outfield just you know just the food alone there's a comedy segment and what you can eat at, eat at sporting events in in America and um, I've been having a good and and the patron saint of my segment 
is uh, John Daly, the golfer. I, I try to oh, leave him in. Oh, I, mean, oh, yeah. I mean, Australians love this guy. Like, the guy should move there. He would make so much money <laughs> with, uh, you know, Australians. And the fact that he can, you know, um, you know, he can swing a golf club in practice rounds with the cigarette for just looking like oh, yeah. it's been super glued to his lower lip. It, yep. it doesn't even move. Move yeah. so, um, so that's been a good experience. So I'm, I'm hoping the Timberwolves can get one more up tonight. So I have yeah. something to talk about. That, has that been fun for you to follow their season? Yeah, I mean, yeah. well, first of all, I learned from my daughter and my son-in-law that they were even good because they've been not <laughs> very good for such a long time. Tevin's a huge fan yeah. as well. Oh, great! But uh, yeah, so I mean, I started watching it, and they are a good team. I just, I did not see them losing three in a row to Dallas. Yeah, I know. Uh, coming back now, three one. They have to win tonight. I'm um, all yeah. they have the rest of the games, but this one is really important because yeah, I don't want to see them losing. You know, four to one. No, 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 no. I hope and, and uh, for the good of the game. I, I mean, we just hope we get one more game. And I, I mean, I love seeing you know, uh, Ed, you know, Edwards just on fire. He's oh, geez, he's beautiful to watch. And it was good, as you would say, Tevin. You, you know, cat the other night was finally in form. Yeah, how oh. good is he going to be when he finally works himself out? Like he's, yeah, like he's a head, yeah. he's a he's a head case. This you know Towns fella, isn't he? Oh, oh yeah, God. he could just pull it together like mentally for a yeah. string of games. Then he he plays like the best player in the league, and then he'll have stretches where you're like, how did you even? How are you even on the team? Yeah, like, just go. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah, um, but but anyway, so the sports have been keeping me busy, Tom. I have as I, I said, I haven't done many. Um, Red carpets. Uh, hopefully, I, next week I might have House of Dragons, so um, I'll, I'll get you some stuff from how I, I've actually. I, I, I stopped after Game of Thrones because I was so pissed off with the ending of Game of Thrones that I mm -hmm. sort of didn't pick up House of Dragons. But I've started watching House of Dragons now before I do the red carpet next week to figure out what's going on. And geez, I really enjoy it. Like I, I, I think the show is great. Yo, know, and and I think they've figured that they're, they're smart. These writers, yeah, you know, they've got rid of their bosses. You know, the, you know, um, right. yeah, the, the two guys that did Game of Thrones and it's as if they've taken, they said, we're going to do this really well, this segment of this portion of history within that Game of Thrones universe. And it's, uh, it's very entertaining. So um, I look forward to that red carpet. I'll, I'll see if I can get something. Um, uh, as for my uh, patron saint in terms of what I've done for you over the years, um, Robert De Niro, he's, oh, um, my, oh my God. God. What's he doing to me? Like, like, <laughs> like, 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 when I saw him do that press conference the other night, day, I said, dude, I have built a lot of my my interviewing comedy around you, you idiot. Yes. Can't you just yes. can't you just be an actor? And this is the one <laughs> like for me, like, like it's diminished my whole bit, you know, because because on YouTube, when they find videos of Robert De Niro, all they do now, no one sits there and goes, gee, that's brilliant how this big, goofy Australian guy somehow has this amazing running gag with the world's best right. actor, right. You know, the, the, the star of you know, Goodfellas 2, the deer hunter, taxi driver, you know, a transformative actor for our, for our the history of the world. But ne all that's gone. <laughs> you know, um, Pretty much. Because he gets, oh, like... It's it's unbelievable. Like, uh, I, I just, I mean, like he thinks he's trying to save the world by this now. That you're not going to change anything. The cats, the race is run. You know, like go back to acting. So it's just, 